How much does marijuana impair driving? Hey stoners, today I wanted to explore this question. I found myself looking it up um, while I was smoking, and I just thought it would make an interesting video. I guess the biggest effects that marijuana would have on driving would be the slower reaction time, disorientation, as well as memory loss. The CDC, government propaganda, gave us an interesting statistic. 13% of nighttime weekend drivers have marijuana in their system, but how much does any of this impair driving? The best way to answer this is to look at two studies and an article by a business insider entitled, Two Studies on the Effects of Marijuana on Driving Have Completely Different Results. In the first study by the American Journal of Public Health in 2017, looked at motor vehicle fatalities and found no significant increase in the states of Colorado and Washington where marijuana is legal. And they compared those two states to eight different states with similar populations, vehicle ownership, as well as traffic laws. And some of those states were Kentucky, Texas, and Alabama. The American Journal of Public Health examined data from 2019 and 2015 and took it from the U.S. Fatality Analyst Reporting System. On the other hand, in the second study, published also in 2017 by the Highway Loss Data Institute, analyzed the frequency of car insurance collision claims in the states of Washington, Colorado, and Oregon. And of course, those are states where marijuana is legal. That study found a 3% increase in collision claims in those states when compared to Wyoming, Idaho, and Nevada. This data apparently shows a correlation between the use of marijuana and the rise in claims. This study examined about 2.5 million insurance collision claims from January 2012 to October 2016. And obviously, the biggest hole in this study, and even the CDC says, there is no way to test for someone under the influence, at least accurately, and at least for now. For me, these two studies do not disprove one another, but rather give an indication on the level of impairment that marijuana has on driving. On one hand, it does not increase, there has been no increase in the fatalities under the influence of marijuana. On the other hand, there has been an increase of collision claims, but it does not specify the severity of the damage, either large or small, a fender bender, or a scrap yard. And in reality, who are we kidding? You cannot tell me a stoner has also not made a stoner mistake while driving and perhaps bumped into something um, not from personal experience, of course, because I do not drive under the influence of marijuana. <laughs> but the frequency rate that it happens that is, is maybe between somewhere like 0% to 3% increase, at least if you go by that study. But it's definitely at a lower rate than alcohol, where 29 Americans die each day of alcohol-related deaths. Died deaths. <laughs> Hopefully that made sense. But get this, there is a legal limit of influence and impairment under alcohol, but a zero tolerance for marijuana. Priorities, I guess. But then again, I suppose you're not supposed to drive under the influence of prescription drugs. The Huffington Post reports on some prescription medications that Americans currently drive on that they're probably unknowing that they're not supposed to because it will impair driving. And these are medications such as pain relievers, antihistamines like Claritin, Allegra, and Zyrtec, antidepressants, anti-anxiety, and muscle relaxers. And again, I'm sure these impair driving. The zero tolerance just means that there is still a crackdown on marijuana 
and the laws do not seem to fit the prescription. I am the Red-Eyed Widow with GentlemanStoners.com, and we would like to remind you, please do not drink and drive, and please do not prescription and drive.